I read the negative Stormgate reviews for over an hour earlier. Wait a minute. Don't tell me that this is the RTS game that was made by ex-Blizzard employees. Don't... Oh no, it's, it is. Oh no... 59% guys. Oh no, what happened? What did they do? I'm one of the most, one of the disappointed founders from Kickstarter. You founded them on Kickstarter? Yeah, they had a big Kickstarter. Oh no, what happened? This was supposed to be the Modern Warcraft 3. How can you fuck up making a Warcraft 3 clone? They basically give you everything that you need. You make cool units, you make very nice heroes, and then you give different spawn locations. You make it so that you can kill trees, so you can open up new pathways. And then you add shops throughout the map with items and enemy monsters that are neutral that you can kill for items too. And then you can sell items in shops. Like it's not difficult to make that man. How could you fuck this up bro? They drank too much Blizzard before they made this. Want me to say the bad things about it? Sure, you can list the bad things. I played the alpha or better or was it? For alpha point zero hours and had enough of it. Really? 55% user re Oh god. How much did they fund, man? Wait. They made 2 million 28k backers. Holy goodness. What did people get like at the highest tier? 30 people. The Hall of Legends. Join the Hall of Legends. A group of generous and dedicated supporters. Sorry about this, guys. I know that I'm basically my... My entire face is radiating heat into your eyes. Like, I'm basically, like, blinding you right now. I really apologize for that. Let me fix this, okay? There you go. <clears throat> who will be recognized... Okay, join the Hall of Legends. A group of generous and dedicated supporters who will be recognized with a custom pluck plague. Invites and exclusive developer playtests and all previous rewards. They have made at least two Kickstarters? Wait, you can make more than one Kickstarter? Funded. Advanced hero customization. Profile portraits. Expanded bot personalities. 3v3 mode early preview. New player assist tool. Additional 3ve weekly mutations. Hut skin. Arctic tile set. But I mean, like, this should be in every... Maybe the hut skin not, but... Okay. Pay to have features. They had one Kickstarter and one Indiegogo. Ah, I see. So the last one was, or the other one was Stormgate Indiegogo, like something like that. Stormgate, late pledge. Late pledge. What the? Yeah, wait. Wait a minute. Dark Reader. There's also this one. Wait, they are triple dipping. They're not even double dipping. So wait, to get this straight, they made a Kickstarter. Triple dicking, it's so crazy. So they made a Kickstarter, right? I don't know when that was. They earned or got funded by 2.3 million. Then they were like, okay, wait. So there's another website, indiegogo.com. We can actually make a late pledge here. To get this straight, they got 2.3 million out of 30,000 backers and... And... Wait a minute, how does that work? Is this the total? Or is this 2 million, 2.2 million from Kickstarter? And then 2.3 million from here. Just give the money. But then they were like, wait. Wait, I'm not done, guys. I'm not done. They were like, hold my beer. I've got another one in me. Real-time strategy returns to PC gaming. Start engine. <laughs> they were like, okay, wait. We need more money. Get equity. They raised 1.1 million. Real-time strategy returns to PC gaming. Awesome. Reasons to invest. Let's see. What, what are the reasons to invest? Holy. Minimum investment. 494. Those are all several funding campaigns, so yeah, combine all of those. So wait, they got 2.3. Let's do the calculation here. Calculator. 5.8 million. Also add, Frost Giant has been able to secure over 1 million this way from 419 investors. 
This came after the studio received 34 million from other investors, including Riot Games, via Seed and Series A funding. Where's that? Games Radar? Wait, they got more. Wait a minute. New RTS from StarCraft 2 Vets raised over 35 million in crowdfunding and investment, but its mixed early access reviews suggests it needs a bit more time in the oven. Yikes. Stormgate, the new real-time strategy game created by a team of former Warcraft and StarCraft 2 developers is finally here, but players' reactions to it so far suggests that it's not quite living up to the hype generated by its massive fundraising efforts. These guys almost had 40 million. Wait a minute. So wait, wait, let me get this straight. These guys need 40 million to make Stormgate, okay? What we have PAL World right here, which cost 1 billion yen to make, which is a rough estimate of 6.75 million. They wouldn't be able to make an RTS. They wouldn't be able to make an RTS. Anyways, developed by Frost Giant Studios, there was never any doubt that Stormgate had good strategy fans' attention. With many showing their support with their wallets, it raised over 2 million on Kickstarter thanks to the prospective players' donations, smashing through its initial 100,000 goal. And then the studio went out to seek equity funding. Yeah, we saw that. Encouraging fans to invest in the studio itself to help support the game. But how do they need so much money? At the time of writing, Frost Giant had been able to secure over 1 million this way from 419 investors. This came after the studio received 34 million from other investors, including Riot Games, Via Seed and Series A funding. Needless to say, expectations are high. But Stormgate released an early access on Steam yesterday for previous playtesters as well as backers and those who bought early access packs. And its reviews aren't exactly fantastic. Right now, after 374 reviews from people who purchased the game via Steam, 56% are positive and it's earned itself a mixed score. While its multiplayer has been praised, some are unhappy with how slow the game feels and have criticized the generic bland campaign. Of course, it's definitely worth keeping in mind that the key purchase, early access, has not currently been announced when Stormgate's 1.0 version will be released. FAQ page suggests it won't be for at least a year, but that's a subject to change. On August 13, it will go free to play, allowing everyone to dive into an extra, uh, into in, in at no extra cost, which will certainly bring in more feedback. Here's hoping uh, that Frost Giant will be able to act on the constructive criticism to create the RTS that fans want. All right, let's see. Zemeos actually supported them. What is your opinion, Zemeo? Why are you disappointed? The monetization is the worst part in my opinion. You pay a huge lot for each commander in co-op and a huge lot for three chapters of the bad, bad campaign. They had one Kickstarter and one Nigo Go. They basically got 2000% of what they asked in Kickstarter and created more and more. It's so much greed. Also, the story is really dark, but the models look like a mix of Fortnite and Tim Burton. <laughs> I cannot take it seriously. Remember that this is mixed reviews from backers and early adopters who really believed in the game. Mm, you can get stuck between trees in the first mission. The guys have shown they are very good at programming an RTS. The game is extremely responsive. The play itself feels really, really good. Bruh. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at the reviews. You can take the developer out of Blizzard, but you can't take Blizzard out of the developer. <laughs> Many of us supported this game because we wanted to see it succeed. A lot of us are hundreds of dollars deep into the game already. Why are there, why are there pre-day one microtransactions that we, that we don't own? Was my $360 not enough? Now I need to be nickel and dimed with an additional paid content on the first day of early access? Yes, they gave me what was promised on Kickstarter. It still feels like a slap in the face that there is content in the game I don't own. Literally before the game is even released. Are you kidding me, man? Like, how is this? I hope... Like, here's a hot take. Here's a hot take. I hope they fail. I hope they get into trouble and have to cut, shut down the studio. If this is what they're going for, man. Like, like guys, guys. You get 40 million. Why can't you make a game like Warcraft 3? Why can't you do that, huh? What is so difficult about it? I mean, yeah, okay, you can sell skins, fine. You can sell skins, that's okay. Quadruple dicking, man, it's insane, man. 
Like, what happened to just making a game for the love of making a game? As I said, free to play is huge red flag. Yeah, true, cranky. You're right. You're right. The campaign is terrible. We are paying at least $5 per mission. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. So let me get this straight. You paid the money so you can play the game. And then you want to play the campaign of the game. And you pay $5 to do a mission in the game. What if you don't pay the $5? Can you just not do the mission? It cost 100 million to make StarCraft 2. What they made feels like 1 million. Not even that. I get that they need to make money off the game, off of the game to keep up the servers and stuff. But it just shows that they have no law for the customers either. Why not sell the game then? Put like a $30 price tag on it. $40 price tag, something like that. Maybe more. I disagree. I don't want them to fail, rather to learn from what they receive now and adjust as good as possible. Listen, man, lol, but I agree with, you, with what you're saying. It's roughly 30 people there to my knowledge. There's many lives that get into trouble over the decisions of a handful of people in more cakes. I agree with you. I don't want these people to lose their jobs, but some people need to lose their jobs. Otherwise, the games will never change as sad as that is and also i think the biggest point is that you can clearly see their priorities when you're taking a look at this what is their number one priority right now when you read this what is the number one priority of this game money dollar a lot of money to be fair, the number one priority is money, but the second one is game. That feels good to play. If the second one is game, that feels good to play, then why is the campaign so bad and bland? Like, I, I get that what you're saying, but then the campaign should not be bland or boring. Let's say you pay $5 per mission. Okay, fine. You agree to that. You know, you buy yourself in. It's, you're an adult. You can make your own decisions, right? Anyone that plays this makes their own decisions. Do I support this or not? And then you do that and you get a shitty campaign. So how is that number two? Doesn't look like number two to me. Cash grab and then close the game because it's bad. The campaign is bad because it's poorly written and the models are bad. The game is definitely feels good to play. Okay, so they, they want the game to feel good to play, but they don't want to have a good campaign. So then what can you do for free in the game? The campaign is terrible. We are paying at least $5 per mission. It's almost like it's a meta commentary on people caring caring too much about the campaign so they purposely made it as horrible as they could maybe it's genius the writing the art style the game isn't winning in, in any category in any category i have the graphics maxed out the mouths don't move during cutscenes the co-op is half-baked at best i'm surprised at just how often stormgate is failing falling flat on its on its face when not only did these developers work on successful projects they can just copy what they did before. You've done this already, you should know what to do. This seems they've forgotten the one factor that, Warcraft, that made Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 so, so successful. The custom maps made by the community are widely popular with a wide range of players. Are the map tools available? Of course not. This should have been a huge focus on getting out. Release the map tools to the community. Allow them to patch up the holes in this abysmal product while you work out more trash campaign missions. The community could be keeping everything alive with custom maps custom games this is what i imagine a free-to-play version of warcraft 3 would be like in 2003 unfortunately for frost giant it's no longer 2003 it's 2024 and this game is insulting the graphics suck the art style suck this game is behind on every metric i can think of i paid so you don't have to avoid this product on the plus side the collector's edition i paid for might be worth some money one day remember when those ex blizzard devs tried to start their own company and fell flat on their face yeah <laughs> I guess I can tolerate the nightmare inducing faces that represent a humans, a rehashed Warcraft 3 campaign, but instead of Arthas getting a cursed sword, Arma gets a fidget spinner. <laughs> and celestials dominating the ladder the straw that broke the camel's back i moved my scout vanguard dog unit to kill an imp infernal worker and instead of attacking it just floated while trying to bite the fleeing unit that and you literally have an ad for a gear up booster in the game's description as of writing august 1st i feel like i've been scammed no wonder the genre is dying thanks for driving more one more nail in the coffin frost giant 
Yikes, and this guy played a long time, man. The game is StarCraft for modern audiences, but worse in either every way. I regret backing it. Where should I have even begin to express my dissatisfaction? The graphics are abysmal, adopting cartoonish art style that seems catered to a younger audience, perhaps those who enjoy games like Fortnite and Overwatch. People just don't like that, man. Why do people keep doing this? This is despite the game being marketed as a designer, uh, as designed for hardcore real-time strategy fans. To be frank, I doubt it would ever appeal to Generation Z or Generation Alpha, even if the game was were exceptional, which is not. Furthermore, even if I were to overlook the art style, the visual quality is so par, failing short of StarCraft 2, a game released over a decade ago. The three factions in the game are mere replicants of Terran, Zerg and Protoss. Yeah, they are. Albeit inferior versions, the user interface is a poor imitation of StarCraft 2, and the gameplay is essentially the same, but of lower quality. I cannot identify a single aspect in which this game surpasses or even matches StarCraft. Despite being released in 2024, campaign yes, I'm quite confident that artificial intelligence nowadays has the capability to produce significantly more intriguing and distinctive storylines with just a few minutes nowadays. Yes, it is early access, but while some games have been salvaged from a similarly dire state, well, yes, No Man's Sky was. But it's quite probable that they may never see the light of a full release. Let us return to play StarCraft 2 and hope for a revival of this fading genre. Perhaps a proper StarCraft 3 is on the horizon. I really want it to be good, but visually it's not coherent and the gameplay looks mediocre at best. Take, take a look at this. Alpha screenshot. Oh, wow. So this is what we have here. This is a StarCraft 2 alpha screenshot. I, shot. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for the alpha screenshot of StarCraft 2? Not Stormgate, StarCraft 2. DirectX 9, by the way, looks like a mobile game. Let's see. It does look like a mobile game. You're right. Yes, it actually does. What is this, man? Where's the shadows? Like, what is going on? Look at this. This is so bad. God's One looks better than this and was made by two people. The game running worse than Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2 would be understandable if it also didn't look worse than a game which came out two decades ago. Guys, God's One. Steam. 9 out of 10. Made by two people. 